the narco path of your wildest dreams. I know you've missed me. I'm here for more confession. DJ's giving me a tough assignment. It's when I'd rather not have to let go of. But what can you do? I'm stuck in this home. Can't leave. I can't even sneak out anymore because we're all on Instagram. It's about my communication skills, style, whatever you want to call it. Because I know that we had a lot of discussions. Story. Do you want to stop the story? Do you know? Do you want me to stop the story? No, I don't. Then, sip it! Who was it? When you were trying to have one of those heart to heart talks like normal people have with me because maybe you thought you saw a future with me but couldn't understand how I could do what I did? That's what I was sad. You noticed when you sat me down. You said something like, I want to discuss this with you. I really enjoy spending time with you, but I still can't understand how you could have spent that night that one night with that person and didn't answer my call. That was just so horrible. And you were looking for me to give you some kind of inside self-reflection type thing, like, oh dear, I have this problem. Oh, what? what happened was I felt like this and I had to talk like that. Well, I don't talk that language. I don't know that stuff. I basically operate to get what I want. Happen to want something? You were around, well, I just made an excuse and abandoned you for the night because I wanted what I wanted. There was no way I could have had any kind of heart-to-heart -heart talk with you about what I did and why I did it. So you know what I did? I simply brought up something you did. So what, what about that time you went out with your family and didn't call me back when I was calling you? Well, you had a genuine reason, man. Your father got me stolen, but I didn't like that father. But I had nothing else to say. I don't have any answer to that. Why would I betray a lie? That's what I do! But I couldn't tell you that was the kind of person I was or you would have ran away. Why, well, basically, did what I wanted. But I wasn't going to tell you I did what I wanted. When you asked me about it, what, what did you see in him? What did he have that I didn't have? have? I said, oh, nothing. He was no fun. He it was ugly. But you saw right through that. Especially when you found my phone and saw all the lusty messages I was sending and telling him how I was with someone. I wasn't happy with him. And I was going to dump you in time and you happened to read it. And I said, I was just kidding. That was a game. I was playing. You didn't buy it. 
For good reason, because it was all true. But I couldn't face you and tell you that I just lied. That's what I always do, I lie. So maybe you're better off without me. Because I'd probably have betrayed you a hundred more times since then if we were still together. So count your blessings. Count your goddamn blessings. Good evening. This is Sandy Hoaxtard with TV5 Real News. It's been quite a while. I've been on a nice vacation. I came back just in time for the lovely situation we're all in right now. I've been watching over the past several months how these ridiculous politicians like that Beto O'Rourke. Did you see him threatening to take your firearms? Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. I listened to that and I thought, what are you trying to do? You're trying to run for a president, but you're going to threaten one of the very constitutional rights everyone has publicly? I beg your pardon? I would have said, tyrant, go home, and he did. He had no business taking a position where he blatantly broke the oath threatening to steal people's property. Come on now. Come on. The hijacking of the town and to try and make an issue out of many guns that the good people's hands that the bitches did put. So you know that, Dato. Oh, you're not something for the country. No, this is bullshit. It's you're about mental health and it's about you're moron boys and masculinity. Our you're our bullshit. Our our shame on you, Dato. Why didn't you make it Why didn't you make it here? Why didn't you make it here? Why didn't you make it here? I know there's been a lot of media propaganda involving firearms. You notice there'll be a shooting every week in some cases. And every time, they'd always be sure to tell you the name of the weapon used. The reason for that was to get the idea in people's head via propaganda that AR-15, scary looking. AR-15, murder. AR-15, kill. And that's all they want the public to associate with the AR-15, which really is just another gun like any other. Some people think it's a machine gun, which I have to tell them, honey, Sorry, but machine guns have been illegal since the 40s. But they think, because of all the propaganda on TV, they give it this fancy name, assault weapon, whatever that is. Gee, I think I'm going to get myself an assault fork and stab them in the eye. How do you like that? Or I'll get an assault chainsaw and I'll cut them up with it. Or maybe an assault pencil. How's that in your eye? It's all ridiculous. Guns are not bought to murder. That's the exception. The rule is, people purchase their firearms to protect themselves. For example, if you're in your home and you have one roll of toilet paper left, and some goon down the street knows it, can sniff it, they may pound on your door and say, give me that roll of toilet paper and push you their way in roll, and Sherman. threaten you and grab your neck and strangle you. But without a firearm, what are you going to do? Fall over and let him do this to you? I don't think so. That's when you would need to pull out that protection device and say, you get out of my house right now or you're going to have a hole in your head. And that would get rid of them. It's for your protection. Or if you're a husband and some group of thugs comes in to rape and murder your children and wife, you don't want that. But if you just have a pencil or if you just have a slingshot, you can't really do much. It's all a propaganda game. These politician people pretend to be so against this horrific violence, which is usually staged and designed to be on the media 24-7. Hint, 
by the way, you can usually tell a false flag or phony operation when it gets 24-7 coverage by the news and they've got interviews with all these people laughing even though they're supposed to be sad. Poor actors and actresses. They couldn't make it on the silver screen. Bless their hearts trying. They sit there, my friend just died. <laughs> oh. And it's just pathetic. But we're supposed to believe it, and unfortunately, many people do. They think, oh, it's a tragedy because they switched their brain off. When the news comes on, they just assume, well, they're telling me the truth. Why would they lie? They would never lie because they're naive. Yes, they would lie. Yes, they do lie. And yes, they are lying to you right now. Of course, I represent real news. That's why I'm telling you this. But it's all a scam. Those politicians don't give a crap about people murdering other people. They like it. They have those Georgia Guidestones that want to decrease the population, and that's their dream come true. But they're pretending to care because they've created the problem by showing constantly, shooting after shooting after shooting, which is designed to get the people to associate. I support those red flag laws. And then these politicians push those, which are also unconstitutional. This is America, goddammit. But they don't seem to realize. But I think they do. It's a scam. And I've made a little discovery about those red flag laws. You hear people on the street saying, We don't want gun violence. We need red flag laws. And I've come to the conclusion that these people aren't against gun violence. They're all for it, because you know what these red flag laws do? Well, there was the guy who was at his home, minding his own business, and at 5 a.m., a policeman came and knocked on the door. He instinctively grabbed his firearm, but when he saw through the door, window, it was the police, he set that down and said, Oh, what can I do for you, officers? All eager to help them. And then when they announced they'd come to confiscate his firearm, he thought, uh-uh, and he went right back over and he grabbed that gun back in his hand, and guess what? Ow! He was dead. The policeman murdered him. So people who want red flag laws aren't against gun violence. They're pro-gun violence as long as it's state-sanctioned. That is disgusting. They know that if they change a law tomorrow and I'm a criminal, I plan on shooting up a funeral home tomorrow during a service. They know that if they announce that day, oh, there's a new law. You're not allowed to have this kind of gun or that kind of gun. Do you think that's going to change my plans any? No, I'm going to carry out my plan. They seem to forget it's already against the law to murder anyone with a gun, with a paperclip, or a spoon, or a knife. Or even a baseball that it's already illegal so how are you going to make more laws on top of that that are going to make any difference to those who don't obey those laws like the criminal the criminal doesn't give a crap what law you change it's already against the law for them to kill so do you think your new gun ban is going to affect them no all it's going to do is affect those good people which brings us to another subject gun free zones are you kidding those are red hot kill zones with easy targets for example, Charlie. He loves to go to church every Sunday. He is a proud firearm owner. He carries his pistol with him at all times. He goes to the church every Sunday. But then, because of some recent event that was propagandized all over the news, his church has decided to become a gun-free zone. That's right, a gun-free zone. He arrives Sunday with his daughter and his wife. And he pats his little pistol. The wife says, Honey, the church has changed. It's a gun-free zone. And he says, Oh, I almost forgot. And he takes out his pistol, tucks it under his seat, and locks it up in a box. And then he and the family walk on into the church. Well, while they're in the service, guess what happens? A gunman appears. That's right, a gunman. And he pulls out his gun, and he aims it at the nearest person. Charlie and sees this, and he's like, Oh, I see that. That's wrong. So he reaches down instinctively to his pistol, and guess what? It's not there. Guess what happens? A massacre! Criminal means they don't obey the law. Which means if you say it's illegal to do A, B, and C, well, chances are they're doing A, B, and C, and they're loving it. So you can make another law, but it's not going to change any of that. All the law is going to do is affect the good guys. Because the good guys weren't allowed to defend themselves, which makes the criminals think, well, that's an easy place. I'm going to go there. I won't have any opposition. I'll just take my pick at who I want to shoot. And that's what they do. But somehow fools think that a gun-free zone is some kind of answer. As if everyone obeys your laws. I saw a funny picture. It showed a bunch of sheep in a pen. And there was a sign up and it said, no wolves. And it had a picture of a wolf with a line through it. Gun control crap. 
Since I think the real reason for it is to disarm the good guys, because that'll leave them defenseless, and then the bad guys can take over. They want a world where it's only criminals which have the guns. You see how sickening that would be and how unsafe? And how they use these events that they dramatically present to us and then say, oh, because of that, we're going to have to do this. And I'm thinking, uh, where is the connection between a criminal committing a crime and a good person trying to protect their family? How do you mix those two up? They're two different things. If anything, those events should inspire people to become armed so the next time one of those events happens, they might be able to possibly stop it before it even starts. Like when they see that criminal reaching out saying, I'm gonna kill her, grabbing the gun, they can say, oh no you're not, pow. And there's one shot, one problem solved. Why would they want to disarm the people? Well, look at the current situation. The whole world has been locked away on house arrest for no good reason. Oh, sure, they're blaming a virus which was bioengineered and created and then distributed among the people. Women walked around Walmarts with the material in their hands and touched things. And then the 5G came on, which mimics flu-like symptoms, killed people, they dropped dead. But then they blamed it on the virus, which was also there, but not as strong problems with the 5G, it leads to a mass surveillance state. Yes, it does. It means they're going to scare every woman, virus, get them terrified in the typical problem reaction solution mode. So they're going to say every day, Oh, we've got a thousand more people dying today. Even though they didn't even have tests at that point, how could they just discover overnight they had that many? Also, those hospitals are empty, as we've seen on Twitter. And it's almost like they're blowing one death and turning it into a thousand to scare the people. Oh yes, people in fear are easier to control. So they can tell you every night horror story after horror story. Oh my goodness, now we have this many. Even though when you go down to that hospital, it's completely barren and they're laying off the nurses. But somebody created some man-made virus. Then you see these retarded Snopes type sites saying, No, it was not bioengineered. It just happened to occur naturally from a bat. It just appeared out of nowhere. And I'm thinking, are you retarded or what? Bats. No, wrong. Phony. Pharaoh was blaming the animals. They might have taken a part of a bat for SARS, but they added an extra protein to it to make it really deadly. A really deadly bug. Problem is it doesn't strike everyone. Well, the 5G does. And they can't have that being interrupted. So they'll just blame the virus. And let the 5G go everywhere because it has to be everywhere in order for their internet of things to work and for their driverless cars, which are ridiculous, the crash. But what if the internet goes down? crash. They want that technology in place everywhere and they're not going to let anything stand in its way. So imagine how easy it would be for these creeps and tyrants to get away with this planet everyone's disarmed. Unfortunately for them, they didn't get that done. So there are plenty of armed people around to take care of them. What's disgusting is the people are figuring out this is not as big of a deal as they're making it, but for some reason these governments all over the world are using this as an opportunity to never let a crisis go to waste. It allows them to do things they would normally never be able to do. They could normally not just say, everyone in every country, go in your home and stay there. And buy all the toilet paper first. That's another thing. Do people think that toilet paper is going to save them from virus? Is toilet paper going to solve all their problems without food, money, and water? What's the deal with toilet paper? I think the media fueled that. They showed empty toilet paper shelves, which sent the message to people, Oh, we better buy toilet paper. I might have diarrhea. Come now. They should have been buying food and practical items. But it's not even considered a serious infectious disease. As I said, the hospitals all around are empty, so it kind of makes the story hard to sell. Because people are hearing about it. Like in New York, they were saying it was a madhouse. Yet a New York resident walked down the street day after day, only heard one siren. And I've been to New York City. There are sirens usually everywhere. Left, right, front, center. Here? Oh no, just one. The rest was silent. Ambulances all over the place, parked, not being used, and we hear on television. Oh, I'm gonna order this many new ambulances for New York. You think, what for? We have an ambulance fetish? Because they've got plenty, and they're not even being used. But then they've got these big trucks they say are refrigeration for dead bodies to be thrown into to scare us. And if you look, they're not even on. They're quiet. But yes, people who are in fear are easier to control. Notice how so many people just gave in when they were told they had to stay home like they're grounded. You child, you're grounded. Stay in your home. And they did it. Nobody opposed. Well, a few have. 
but most don't. They just do what they're told. And it's sad to see all the people that sit there watching their television and believing every word of it. They, they're lying to you. That's not even possible for that many victims to occur overnight. Now, come on, but they're saying it. Hospitals all over the country are empty. All over the world. Other countries, empty. It's just a mystery. I don't know what's going on. And I'm sick of seeing that president every time. If I go to YouTube, for example, I watch a video of something I enjoy. The autoplay comes on with some presidential fool talking about masks. Ugh, I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear who wants to sit and listen to that all day. It's depressing. It's also falsified. It's disgusting. If you're listening to that crap daily, my advice to you is to switch it off. All it's going to do is create fear for you. It's going to make you frightened. So then if someone says, oh, you're going to have to give up another right for your safety, you're going to say, oh, sure, take it. I've even seen people telling other people, you need to stay home. And I think people have always gotten contagious diseases, like the flu. In fact, more people die from that than this other new thing that they created in the lab and pretended like they didn't. It doesn't occur in nature. Do the work, study it. Look at the scientific research in North Carolina. Look at their paperwork. It's available. But they want you to think it just happened. And oh, now it's going to start happening all the time. So you're going to have to get used to this. And I think, no, I'm not, honey. I don't think so. If it becomes like in the Philippines where the president says he's going to shoot anybody who comes out of their home, well, honey, he needs to be shot with a vaccine. And that's the next part of it. They want to give everyone that mark of the goddamn beast, 666. They want to give that to everybody through a vaccine and that goddamn disgusting transgender female to male Bill Gates sits there thinking he's some kind of authority on anything. Oh, we'll get back to normal once everyone has been given a vaccine, even though I don't give them to my own children, but that's a different story. But you all need one. I think, what a goddamn hypocrite. You're going to demand everyone take it? Well, that means you and your children, but oh, they don't count. Why is that now? Maybe you should ask that question. Maybe he knows something we don't. The elites typically don't give such crap to their children because they know what it's going to do to them. Media propaganda, Big Pharma pays all the bills, and so they're going to force the stations not to ever admit what's in the Bayer's site, which lists fairly like 1% probably, and there's plenty in there of injuries by vaccinations, but so many people are brainwashed saying, oh, you're anti-vax, you're endangering everyone's life, and my thought is, really, I don't want to vaccinate my Susie, but your little Johnny is vaccinated, so how exactly is my Susie a threat to him? He's covered, isn't he? He's got that vaccination. He's not going to catch it. He can't get it from her. How is she a danger to him? There's no good answer for that. They're just stupid. They're fools. Vaccinations cause problems. They turn a normal child into an instant autistic. Not artistic like me, but autistic. Immediately. Which makes life difficult for the child and the family. Now who wants to add extra difficulty to their life? I don't think anyone does. Someone who pushes those vaccines does. I never even heard of autism when I was a child. Only to that movie Rain Man came out, but I figured it was a rare thing because I never saw it anywhere. Then a few years later, it was everywhere. And other health issues like gluten allergies, those didn't exist before either. But all this poison that's been going in people's veins, is, it damages their DNA and it ruins their insides. And then they have health issues. They suffer cognitive dissonance too, like this one chick I know. She had never had a flu shot her entire life. But she kept hearing all of her peers around her saying, Oh, I've got to get a flu shot. Oh! And when she went to the CVS, say, Oh, would you like to have your flu shot? Would you like to have your flu shot? She always said no. But after a while, she listened to the propaganda. She listened to her friends saying, Oh, you've got to. You've got to get that shot. So she did. And guess what she was awarded with soon after? She got the flu for the first time in her life. She contacted the doctor and said, I don't appreciate you giving me the flu with that vaccine. And what did he say? True to the propaganda he was trained, oh, there's no way the vaccine gave you the flu. That's not possible. You must have come in contact with the flu germ just about the time you got the vaccine. And she said, BS, mother blanker. That is a ridiculous lie. And people are demonized for expressing such opinions. Just go to that fair site, spend some afternoon reading, and see all the different injuries that have been reported. Notice how the companies that create them are not held liable for any lawsuit, which means they can put as many aborted fetus cells in there they want, poisons and whatever else, and not have to answer to it. Because they're probably psychopaths. They don't have to take accountability for their actions. They just do what they want and get away with it. 
If the customer has damage, well, they're not responsible. Gee, that sounds like a wonderful position to have. I don't think so. But this is Sandy Hoekstar just giving you the latest news and telling you, after this program is over, switch off your television. Otherwise, it's going to drive you crazy, it's going to damage your mental health, and it's going to ruin your mood. And nobody needs that in a time like this. So you have a wonderful afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. This is Sandy Hoekstar with TV5 Real News, signing off. What are you looking down my shirt? Is the camera off? What's going on? One out of ten, you want to come over? You know, last time, uh, I had to tell them the baby was his. We both know it's yours. But it is beautiful. I think we have to see the child. Don't tell my husband. Did you turn the... Turn 